Around the world, there's over 145,000 flights every single day. So it's no wonder that sometimes scary things happen on planes. From the scariest near misses experienced by pilots and passengers, to mysterious videos that no one's ever been able to solve. Plane blows up. Have you ever seen a plane blow up? I don't mean like in a movie with special effects, I mean really explode. Well that's what happened on purpose in the UK back in 2015. Of course, no one was on this plane when it was blown up. But it was still quite a sight to see. It was done as a test to see how well a plane would hold up against an explosive. They used a Boeing 747, and that meant this test cost $387 million. It's quite an amazing sight to see, and the plane did hold up quite well on the outside. But of course, if this happened during a flight, the plane would simply fly out of the sky in two pieces. Scarily, researchers planted the explosives in the reinforced cargo area. They did this because they wanted to simulate someone taking an explosive in their luggage. Hopefully this very expensive research saved lives. Road Landing this one took place in Parkland, Washington in 2019. A cop car was driving down a road one day and everything seemed normal. That's when all of a sudden a plane lands on the road next to him. The pilot must have been pretty good because he didn't hit anything. The plane made a dramatic thud onto the road and then eventually came to a stop. But just as this happens, it was pulled over by the cop car. Making a road landing is incredibly illegal, but it turns out the plane had actually malfunctioned and the pilot had done a pretty good job to land on a road. Thankfully, there were no reports of injuries or damage. But the cop said after 21 years on the force, this was a first for him. Mystery Plane one day in LA, a plane spotter named John Graff was recording a normal plane. The airplane had just taken off from an airport and was flying away. That's when in a split second, a large aircraft flies right in front of this plane. It then flies right off frame. Oh, that was nice. Anybody see that? John and his friend are both taken aback. His friend says maybe it was a fighter jet going really fast but this looks much larger than a fighter jet to me. Also, I've analyzed the general shape and I can't match this to any fighter jet. This looks much more like a private jet, but private jets don't go this fast. For it to move at that speed from that distance means that it must have been going as fast as a fighter jet, but it doesn't have the shape of one. Another weird thing is this plane makes no sound. That should be impossible being that close and going that fast. Some in YouTube comments have said this could be a super fast stealth jet the military is developing. But this video is over one year old and the military's not brought out anything like this. What do you think could be going on with this very mysterious plane? Oh, that was nice. Anybody see that? Plane crash. Statistically, airplanes are the safest way to travel, much more so than a car, boat, or even bicycle. But every year, there's around 14 plane crashes. This plane crash in 2012, however, was done on purpose. Thankfully, the passenger jet was remotely controlled. This was after the pilots parachuted out of it. As you can see, the helicopter tailing it was filming it for TV. Many expected the airplane to simply explode as soon as it hits the ground. But the sand actually softened the blow. Instead, it skidded and then the plane's nose broke off. Sand then tore through the plane's body, totally destroying the interior. The aircraft was a Boeing 727. That means this experiment cost around $30 million to do. It was crashed in the Mexican desert. And if you go to Mexicali, you can see sections from the crashed plane stored alongside highway number five. Snake on a plane. Everyone remembers the iconic Samuel L. Jackson movie, Snakes on a Plane. But it turns out, truth is scarier than fiction. While a plane was in the air, a snake came down from the overhead compartment. Using magazines and a blanket, two of the passengers were able to capture this snake. This took place in 2016 on an Aero Mexico flight. Aero Mexico say they're not sure how the snake got onto the plane. Thankfully, they were able to make an emergency landing and remove the snake from the plane. Plane Ghost This video was filmed one night on a plane. Most of the passengers are blissfully unaware of what's going on. They're wearing headsets and watching a movie. But one passenger keeps seeing something very strange. 
floating from one of the seats appears to be some kind of phantom or ghost. To me, it kind of looks like a woman's face. In the comments section, one person said maybe someone was smoking on the plane. But nowadays, smoking is prohibited on every plane. Also, the uploader did not mention that. What do you think this ghostly face could be? UFO one day an airplane was landing very close to another plane flying in the sky. That's when a young passenger took out his phone to record out of the window. This is a pretty common thing to do when landing over somewhere interesting. But as he was filming, something strange comes into the frame. An incredibly fast, small object was moving in the opposite direction to his plane. Whoa! Whoa, did you see that? The boy is stunned and says, whoa, did you see that? I've tried slowing this down, but the frame rate is very low. This means all we see is a disc-shaped object. This may be motion blur though, in reality it's likely a lot smaller. This craft may have been emitting some kind of light. This has led to some online saying it could be a UFO or maybe paranormal. I think an argument for a military aircraft could be made here. After all, many people do sometimes mistake military aircraft for UFOs. It's far too fast to be a bird and far too small to be a drone. Storm landing. As I've already said, flying in planes is pretty safe. But the most dangerous part of any flight is the landing. That's because that's when most incidences occur. In 2008, a plane was landing at Hamburg Airport in Germany. There's a terrible storm and this affects the plane's landing. The plane slides from side to side and even scrapes its wing on the runway. Thankfully, the 136 people on board were okay. An investigation also found that the Airbus's computer switched to ground mode. This meant the computer took over and limited the pilot's power when landing. This led to Airbus improving their flight's computers. Hudson River Landing In 2009, an Airbus plane was flying to New York's LaGuardia Airport. That was when all of a sudden it struck a flock of birds. These birds went into the plane's engine, causing it to lose all power. The pilots were panicked as they could not reach any airport to make an emergency landing. That's when pilot Chesley Sullenberg did the unthinkable. He landed on the Hudson River in Midtown Manhattan. Amazingly, all 155 people on board were okay. They were rescued by nearby boats. You've probably flown on a boring standard airplane before. But the airplanes in this video look like science fiction. They seemingly should not be able to fly, but they can. From a bizarre airplane with a third turbine, to an airplane which was made to carry other airplanes. Airbus Beluga. You've likely heard of the company Airbus before. They make many of the airplanes normal airlines use. They're also famous for building one of the largest double-decker passenger airplanes. This was the 380-seat A350. But what most people don't know is that's not their biggest plane. Their biggest plane is the Airbus A3100 600ST. This is better known as the Airbus Beluga. The purpose of the plane is to transport other planes and plane parts around Europe. It looks ridiculous and that it should not be able to fly. Because of the shape, it looks like the aerodynamics simply would not work, but they do. It's been such a success, Airbus has been using the Beluga for 20 years. MD-160 The MD-160 is a very unique type of plane known as an Encrano plan. It's said to be a hybrid of a plane and a warship. The plane uses ground effects to lift off up into the sky. It has eight engines mounted at the front, and at the back are missile launchers. These can take out enemy warships and planes as well. It was first used by the Russian Navy, and it gained the nickname the Caspian Sea Monster. Super Guppy Everyone knows that NASA makes rockets. But did you know NASA also have their own plane? This is known as the B-377SG-SGT, but it's better known as the Super Guppy. When many people see this for the first time, they assume it's photoshopped, but it's not. The first Super Guppy was made all the way back in 1960, but since then, new models have been built and they're still used by NASA today. They're used to carry rocket parts all over the country. 
The Super Guppy is very similar to a Boeing military transport plane, but it's got far more powerful engines on it to carry more heavy things. The fuselage is so massive because it has to carry rockets. Because of its aerodynamics, it looks like this plane should not be able to fly. But it does, and the current NASA Super Guppy is stationed at El Paso International Airport in Texas. Vought V173 Many people online have nicknamed this the Pancake Plane. That's because it's got a flat, disc-shaped body. It's also got very tiny wings, and it's powered by two very small propellers. It was built during the Second World War, and this was when people were designing and flying all kinds of bizarre things. There was much less oversight and planning because there was a war. Anything engineers dreamed up and made, they would fly. The V-173 has a disc-shaped body, and from above, it kind of looks like a UFO. Experts have said this may be why there was a spike in UFO sightings in the 1940s. ELM-2075 the ELM-2075 is a bizarre looking plane. It's known as an airborne early warning and control plane. This means it can sense radar activity. It was developed by the Israeli army. But what makes it stand out is its gigantic nose. The reason for the shape of the plane's nose is because it's using this instead of a rotodome. Inside the plane's nose is a radar. This can detect and jam frequencies. The interior of the plane's nose looks like this. But there are also radar panels on either side of the fuselage. And there's also radar panels under the plane's tail. This allows the plane to detect and jam frequencies 360 degrees. Antonov AN-225 it's safe to say we've seen some pretty gigantic planes on this list. But what is the biggest plane in the world? Well, that would be the Ukrainian Antonov AN-225. This plane is used to haul cargo, but it also holds 200 world records. It holds the record for the world's largest plane, and also the heaviest total cargo on a plane, and even the heaviest single piece of cargo ever carried on a plane. The plane looks like it defies gravity. It's so big and heavy it does not look like it should be able to fly, but it does. The plane is now mainly used for transporting rockets and also other planes. The landing gear is so big it has 14 wheels on either side. It also has 6 massive turbines which look ridiculous. V-22 Osprey Is it a plane? Is it a helicopter? Is it a warship in the sky? These are questions many people ask when they see the Boeing V-22 Osprey in the sky. Believe it or not, this is not a helicopter. It's known as a VTOL, which is technically a plane. It was made for the US military by Bell and Boeing, but it's gone on to be quite a controversial plane. The plane flies with two gigantic propellers facing forward. But the controversy lies in the cost. The US has spent nearly 36 billion on these. But many military officials say they do the same thing that helicopters do, but for way more money. Many have claimed that the military industrial complex and the government were being corrupt here, and they could have simply just made helicopters instead of these very expensive and bizarre planes. Bereave BE-200 this Russian vehicle is an amphibious aircraft. This means, as well as in the skies, it can also operate on water. It's used for search and rescue if someone gets lost at sea. If there's ever a fire, this plane can scoop up water from the sea. It can then dump this water on large fires, putting it out. Similar planes were used in California recently during their wildfires. Northrop Grumman B-2 This is one of the most iconic planes in the world. But when you really think about it, it's quite strange. Because of its shape, it does not seem like it should be able to fly. It's totally flat and has no turbines. It also has no tail, fuselage, or rudder. Computers help the pilots stay in flight. And the technology to make this plane took decades to research and build. Stipa Caproni This is one plane which looks like it would crash as soon as it takes off. But this very stocky Italian plane actually did fly. It was used by the Italian military in the 1930s. The fuselage of this plane was hollow. Some called the plane a barrel with wheels because that's pretty much what it was. CGTFF Most of the time airplanes have two turbines. 
games. Some of the larger ones do have more, but there's always an equal number. That's why many are baffled when they see this plane with three turbines. The plane you're seeing is actually a Boeing 747, but it's a special one which has been made to test a new turbofan engine. This is the PW1200G. They decided the best way to test it was to put it onto a specially designed wing. But why is it located here, right next to the pilot? Well, this is to allow for proper airflow around the aircraft's nose. And it also counterbalances the airplane's weight. This is so it doesn't fall out of the sky and crash into a big explosion when it takes off. Many people have a fear of flying, but this is often unfounded. Statistically, planes are much more safe than cars, boats, or bikes. That is, unless you're taking off or landing at one of these airports. These airports don't simply look terrifying, they're really dangerous. From an airport where planes literally land in the water, to an airport which has trains and cars driving through it. Agati Aerodrome, India This airport is found in Lakshwadeep, India. The runway is very short, at only 4,000 feet. This is about half the normal size of an airport runway, which is normally 8,000 feet. The reason why planes have to risk this is to serve the 36 Indian tourist islands. Since 2013, they've wanted to expand this airport. But unfortunately, it would be very expensive and hard to do. Only the most experienced pilots can land here. That's because if you don't slow the plane down just right, you could end up in the sea. Barra International Airport, Scotland This airport in Scotland is the only airport in the world where flights land on a beach. This airport does not even have a runway and the airplanes simply have to land on the sand. If there's a high tide, then too bad, the airplanes have to land in the water. Planes can actually do this if the water is not too high, but it makes for a very scary landing. It's even more frightening for pilots. Wet sand flicks up at the plane, and this means the pilot has little to no visibility when landing. The upside is the airport is very beautiful. Because of the surroundings, it was voted the best airport approach of 2015. But does the scary runwayless landing make it worth it? Thankfully, only lighter aircrafts can actually land at this airport. That's because if a plane too heavy landed in the sand, it could sink into it and get stuck. Paro Airport, Bhutan This Himalayan airport is like no other. Paro Airport is the only airport in Bhutan, and only eight pilots in the world are qualified to land here. Passengers often have to take anti-anxiety meds before landing. That's because it's in a deep valley on the bank of a river, but surrounding it are very high peaks. This means you have to avoid gigantic mountains to land at this airport. The runway is also only 6,000 feet long. This makes it one of the few in the world shorter than their elevation above sea. That is because this airport is located at 18,000 feet above sea level. Pilots don't just have to have incredible landing skills. In fact, one pilot said the hard part is getting up in the air. They need to ascend a huge amount and very fast. If they don't, they run the risk of flying straight into a mountain. Gisborne Airport, New Zealand One thing which is essential with any airport is making sure the runway is clear. If there's debris, animals, or people on the runway, then the plane can't take off. But at Gisborne Airport, there's something on the runway almost all the time. And that thing is a train. That's because a train track runs right through this airport. This goes right across the main runway. And it's scary not only for the people on the planes, but the people on the train too. Thankfully, the air traffic control is very good. But sometimes, they don't leave much time between the trains passing and the planes taking off. The trains that use this track are steam trains, and the steam and smoke emitted by the trains can sometimes make visibility poor for the pilots. And the steam and smoke emitted by the trains can sometimes make visibility poor for the pilots. Princess Juliana Airport, St. Martin this is the only airport on the tiny Caribbean island of St. Martin. The airport has a very low altitude flyover landing approach. That's because one end of the runway is very close to the shore of Maho Beach. The airplanes literally go right over the heads of the beachgoers. Signs have been put up warning people not to go too close, but they still do. Sometimes there are jet blasts of planes departing the airport, and this can blow all of the beachgoers back off the sand into the sea. One woman was even blown all the way down a beach thanks to a jet blast. She hit her head on the sand and 
and sadly did not make it. Since then, more warning signs have been put up on the beach, but many use these as a prop for photos. It's also pretty scary for people landing. Just imagine looking out of your plane window and seeing how close you are to the sea. In 2017, this airport was ravaged by Hurricane Irma. Congonhas Airport, Brazil When landing at this Brazilian airport, there's a lot that could go wrong. That's because the airport is right in the middle of a giant city. Planes have to fly very low right above these gigantic skyscrapers, but at the same time high enough so that they don't plow into them. After flights, pilots drink lots of alcohol to calm their nerves. Sadly, many crashes do happen at this airport. In 2007, an Airbus tried to land in dark, wet conditions. The plane skidded on the runway but crashed through the fence. It then crossed a busy road and burst into flames at a gas station. The airport is said to be the most infamous airport among pilots. There have been 16 plane crashes at this airport, and it's also the busiest airport in South America. This means pilots landing have to be quick thinking and fast. One wrong move could cause a massive plane crash. Svalbard Airport, Norway this airport is located in the archipelago of the Svalbard. This is a cluster of Norwegian islands in the Arctic Ocean. The amazing thing about this airport is how remote and barren it is. All around you is just snow on this small island. The runway is very small, meaning only some pilots are qualified to land here. A small Cessna plane once crashed at this airport, and sadly this took out all six people on board. The worst air crash in Norwegian history also happened at this airport. That was when a plane landing at this airport crashed into a mountain. Gibraltar International Airport, Gibraltar We've already seen the New Zealand airport, which is used by trains as well as planes. But what about civilians driving through an airport? This really happens at Gibraltar's airport. There is a major road that goes through the airport's runway. Traffic has to stop for every plane that lands. This is not only scary for the pilots and passengers landing, but it's also scary for the traffic which has to stop as planes go right over their heads. Gibraltar Airport is considered the most dangerous airport in Europe. In 2017, a Gibraltar police car drove off the road and onto the runway. This stopped an Airbus plane from taking off. There have also been various crashes while landing and taking off from this airport. Courchevel Airport, France this airport is only used by the super rich. It's located in the French Alps, and it mainly serves very wealthy people who want to ski. The runway is incredibly short and thus dangerous. Not only that, the runway has a ski mogul in the middle of it. This means your plane will have to land right over skiers' heads. Antarctica this airstrip doesn't look like a runway at all, but the snow here has actually been leveled out for planes. These are mainly used to haul supplies and researchers to McMurdo Station in Antarctica. Boeing jets and cargo planes can land here, but of course as it's Antarctica conditions are very very bad, and over the years many planes have crashed in Antarctica. We see Boeing 747s above us in the sky every day. But the most recognizable Boeing 747 and the most expensive one has to be Air Force One. It's a symbol of the Presidency of the United States. It's been to every continent but Antarctica. The plane is gigantic and is easily recognizable from the US flag and presidential seal. But inside this plane are some secrets they'd rather you didn't know. From various decoy planes, to missile, nuclear and radar defense systems on board. Let's check out the biggest secrets of Air Force One. Missile Defense The US president is not welcomed in every country they go to or fly over. There's always the potential that someone could try and take the plane down. This could be a rogue militia group, or maybe even a fellow superpower. That's why Air Force One can expel flares from the aircraft's body. These are very bright and burn at very high temperatures, and they're enough to confuse any heat-seeking missile. The missile's heat-seeking warhead will then go for one of the flares instead of the plane, and it will hopefully explode in the air far away from Air Force One. Air Force One has missile launch warning systems on the front and back of the aircraft. It's able to track missiles using the ultraviolet exhaust signature the missiles put out. 
This is seriously high-tech and expensive stuff. And that's why many military planes, including fighter jets, don't even have this technology. Air Force One also has a high-energy laser. This can heat up the head of an incoming missile, thus detonating it before it even reaches the plane. Air Force One also has an ANAAQ-24. This is also known as the Nemesis Directional Countermeasures System. This can fire flashes of infrared energy at incoming missiles. This will basically mess up any targeting the missile had. Air Force One is also said to have a belly-mounted anti-air missile system. This could destroy any incoming enemy aircraft. Decoy Plane If you've ever seen a presidential motorcade, you'll know that there's many versions of the Beast. This is the car the president travels in. Well, in the air, things are no different, as they use decoys as well. Sometimes, the vice president flies on the decoy plane. This means that the president and vice president can't both be taken out. The decoy plane will always land a few hundred miles away from Air Force One. This is in case anything bad is to happen to Air Force One. Nuclear Defense it's said that the greatest threat to world peace is nuclear weapons. Well, if you're aboard Air Force One, then you don't need to worry about that too much. That's because the presidential plane can stand up to a nuclear blast. It could not survive a direct hit, because nothing can. But Air Force One is heavily shielded against the effects of nukes. This means the plane could keep flying if a nuke went off near it. And even more impressively, the communications and electronics would still work. This is so that in the event of a nuclear fallout, the president can command operations from the sky. Situation Room Everyone is familiar with the Situation Room located inside the White House. It's the main mission control room, and it's where some of the biggest, world-changing decisions are made. But there's not just one Situation Room located in the West Wing. There's also one aboard Air Force One. The Strategy Center includes a large desk and a screen too. This is so that people on the ground can video call to the plane. If anything critical happened while they were traveling, then the President and his top advisors would meet him. Radar Jammers we already know that Air Force One can defeat enemy aircrafts and missiles, but they don't want to risk actually having to do that. So that's why it's crucial that the President's plane does not show up on enemy radars. To prevent this, Air Force One has many electronic countermeasures. This can jam or confuse enemy's radars. There are pulse emitters on the front of the aircraft. This can confuse an enemy radar by sending back a radar pulse. This will either mirror the return frequency or block it outright. This means anyone trying to track Air Force One won't know its distance, size, or elevation. Modern radars operate on many frequencies, and that's why Air Force One can also jam multiple frequencies at once. But the more widely spread the jamming is, the less effective it is. Alternatively, the plane can simply jam one frequency, but this leaves it vulnerable to other frequencies. Refueling Air Force One can fly one third of the way around the planet. This means the President can get from the United States to Japan in one trip. But what if Air Force One needs to be refueled? Well, it won't stop at an airport to do this. That's because it would be way too complex and expensive. That's why instead a mid-air refueling jet would simply refuel the plane while it's in the air. This means Air Force One can stay in the air indefinitely. This is again useful in case of a nuclear fallout. The President would not need to land and would be safe from any nuclear radiation. Military Operation did you know that every Air Force One flight is a military operation in and of itself? The plane is normally stationed at Andrews Air Force Base, but to get there from the White House, the President needs to travel in Marine One. This is the helicopter version of Air Force One. Then Air Force One is readied by military staff. As this is happening, a military convoy sets off. This goes to anywhere Air Force One is about to go, but in advance. It requires extreme teamwork, logistics, and cooperation. Also, when Air Force One enters a foreign airspace, it becomes a military operation for that country too. Air Force One is never far from friendly forces. They will often call ahead to their allied nations. For example, if Air Force One was flying over Europe, it may be escorted by RAF planes. Air Force One is even protected when flying over water. That's because there are many ballistic missile subs stationed under the water. These would be able to launch nuclear missiles against anyone trying to attack Air Force One. Food 
Did you know that the refrigerators on Air Force One cost $12 million? That's because they're massive and very reliable. If there was an emergency, Air Force One would need to operate four weeks at a time. On board, there are 3,000 meals. There's also presidential candy on Air Force One. President Reagan started this tradition with jelly beans. But today Air Force One is stocked with presidential M&Ms. Medical Facilities did you know that there's an operating theatre inside the aircraft? If the president ever has a health issue, then he's not taken to a normal hospital. Instead, he'd get onto Air Force One and be treated by the doctors on board. There's also a dental office with a dentist on board too. Medical workers can even telelink onto the aircraft. They can then use robotic hands to carry out operations. Price all of these amazing features come at a great cost. Air Force One itself costs nearly $4 billion, but the operating costs are even more expensive. To operate Air Force One for just one hour costs $206,000. And as more features, staff, and high-tech gear is added, this number will increase. It's estimated that the new Air Force One, which may be coming in the next 10 years, will cost over $5 billion. It's said that Boeing will build the new Air Force One. But who knows all of the hidden and secret features we may discover on that one. Even though the taxpayers pay for it, none of this stuff is disclosed. That's because it's secret for security reasons. But when the new Air Force One comes out, I'll be sure to do an updated video. So what exactly are ghost flights? They're not airplanes which are empty and have been all forgotten about. Instead, they're airplanes which actually fly on a regular schedule. The only difference is there's no opportunity for the public to buy tickets on these airplanes. So if no one can actually use them, then what's the point? Well, it's about airlines keeping slots. Let's say an airline has the right to fly into a popular airport, for example, Heathrow Airport in the UK. If they were going to pause that service for more than one week, this would give the airport the right to allocate their slots to another airline for free. That would be very bad news for an airline because these slots are expensive. A single departure slot can set an airline back $100 million or more. And remember, that's for one single pair of arrival and departure slots. So what's the best way to keep these slots even when there's not the demand? Well, it's simple. All the airline does is run an empty aircraft until you're ready for normal service. According to simpleflying.com, one good example of this route is the London Heathrow to Cardiff Wales flight. This flight leaves six days a week with crew but no passengers on board. Originally, it was a flight that went to Uzbekistan, but due to unrest in the country, it was cancelled many years ago. Instead of giving up the valuable slot, they decided to simply run a service to Cardiff instead. This allows them to keep the slot and save $100 million. Now, you may be thinking, why not just have passengers on this flight? After all, if the airplane's going to one destination, why not put one or two passengers on? Well, the reason why is because it would actually cost more for the airline to do. They would have to set up agents, bagging services, and other elements if passengers were on board. They know there will be costs, but they want to keep it at a minimum. So that's why they don't allow any passengers on these flights. This is very wasteful because airline fuel costs a lot of money. Also, oil and gas is running out rapidly. Not only does it waste money and resources in that sense, it's also bad for the planet. According to scientists, one of the main reasons for global warming is aeroplanes. This doesn't mean we should all stop flying, but it does mean that it's causing massive waste flying these planes with no one on them. They're literally harming the environment just to save some money. And it's also totally futile because the flights have no passengers. But what if I told you there's also one airline which flies a mysterious ghost plane? That's right, the airline PIA has operated over 80 flights with no passengers. However, they've given no logical explanation to this. The flight ran totally empty without any passengers many times. Apparently, executives have been asked why, but they never respond to media inquiries. PIA is Pakistan International Airlines, and it makes no sense as to why they would be flying these planes with no one on them. They're not doing it to secure slots. And also the airline is currently losing $1 million every year. Some commentators have said maybe the airline is being used to transport illegal cargo. And some have said maybe it's being used to funnel rogue political activities. 
For example, there have been cases where the CIA has flown cash to various countries for black ops missions. So maybe Pakistan's CIA, known as the ISI, is doing the same thing. Other airlines have been criticized for sending in weapons to areas like Syria. And some commentators say maybe PIA is doing something similar. But on that note, why has there been a massive increase in ghost flights all of a sudden? Well, it's because of the number one news item right now, the coronavirus outbreak, also known as COVID-19. Right now, there's over 120,000 cases of coronavirus. And so far, it's taken 4,300 lives. Well, this is causing people not to travel because they're either not allowed to or they're too scared to do so. So that's why many airlines are currently flying airplanes with no one on them. Despite the coronavirus, airports still say, use it or lose it. Airports are forcing airlines to fly their planes in, making sure they still keep their slots. In Europe, there's even laws about takeoff and landing slots at airports. In the UK, these rules also apply to Heathrow, Gatwick, Stansted, Manchester, Luton, and London City Airport. So, thanks to these laws and regulations, airplanes literally have to waste time, money, and destroy the planet flying empty planes. Apparently, right now in the UK, 40% of aircrafts above your head don't have any passengers on them. That's creepy to know, but even when there's not a massive pandemic, ghost flights are still operating every single day. Now it's time to make your voice heard. Do you think ghost flights are a good thing, or should they be abolished because they're wasteful? Vote in the poll in the top right corner and let me know. If you want some more amazing videos, check out my second channel. But as always, thanks for watching. Check out some more videos on screen right now. Leave a like if you enjoyed, and if you haven't already, what are you waiting for? Subscribe to Top 10s.